Hey everyone, I've been using the new 2024 11-inch iPad Pro for the past few months since it came out, and what started out as a disappointment of a device, something I really wasn't excited about, turned into one of my most used devices that I've really learned a lot from. But before we get started, a little bit of history. And also, this video is sponsored by Notion, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. So as we all know, in 2018, the iPad Pro got this major redesign. It became thinner, switched to USB-C, had a better display, and the Apple Pencil attached magnetically, and also began to charge wirelessly as well. A huge upgrade. I used it pretty much every day for university, and it basically replaced my MacBook Pro, which at the time was the 16-inch i9 MacBook Pro, which was good at first, but turned into this absolute slog of a machine machine within a few months. Then the 2020, 2021, and 2022 iPad Pros came out, as well as the introduction of the Magic Keyboard, and the iPads themselves didn't really have that many new exciting features, but the Magic Keyboard definitely brought some excitement back to the iPad for a little bit. But the iPad Pro just didn't really have anything that new or exciting, and for a lot of people, their previous 2018 iPad Pro was perfect, no need to upgrade. For most of this time, the iPad didn't have floating windows, pro-level video editing software, or really good design software, and it really felt like it was trying to do a lot, but really never reaching that goal. There was many third-party applications that kind of filled in the gaps for a little bit, but always the desktop versions of these apps were significantly better. Then Apple dropped the first few Apple Silicon MacBooks and pretty much everything changed. They were ultra thin, lightweight, beautifully redesigned, and incredibly fast and powerful. They felt like actually using an iPad or an iPhone with their fluidity. And they were so good that when I bought my M1 Max MacBook Pro, the 14 inch model, I completely stopped using my iPad Pro. Like it ended up just sitting in a drawer, didn't really want to touch it because I could do everything that I wanted to do on my iPad on my MacBook Pro, which was also incredibly thin and light. And it's kind of sad to think about. I loved using the iPad Pro and it ended up being just a device I never really touched. But fast forward to 2024, rumors began to circulate about a brand new iPad Pro model. And then of course, when the new iPad came up for pre-order, I ordered it and I've been using it ever since. Now, at first, I kind of had the same sort of iPad Pro blues as my previous iPad. I picked it up, started using it, enjoyed some of the new features, the new design, and then eventually went back to my MacBook Pro. But then I went back to my iPad Pro and started using it more and more and more and started to appreciate a lot of the new updates. Now, of course, hardware-wise, there are a few new things. The design is thinner and lighter, which makes a big difference while you're holding it. And without the case, it feels incredibly thin and light, like holding a piece of paper, like this magical display has thinner bezels all around too, so it's just much more immersive. It's like this magical canvas. The display is also incredibly beautiful on this iPad. It's actually two OLED displays stacked to give you a total brightness of 1,000 nits for standard content, and up to 1,600 nits for HDR content. What that basically translates to is a beautiful display inside and outside, you can see it perfectly, and it's vibrant, it's beautiful, it's very accurate for editing photos and videos. I love the display on this iPad. It's also, of course, 120 hertz, so using the Apple Pencil, general day-to-day -day usage, everything feels fast and smooth. It is one of the best displays Apple has ever shipped. But perhaps the most exciting update was the new accessories. Alongside the new iPad, Apple released this brand new Magic Keyboard with an aluminum top body, which was a massive update to the previous one, which had this rubberized top that got really dirty very quickly and also felt quite cheap. But this new version is much sturdier, much more solid. I definitely prefer this update. The trackpad is great, the keyboard feels great to type on with really solid key travel even being this thin, and also there are function keys as well on this keyboard. And the Apple Pencil, now called the Pencil Pro, has some new updates as well, like new gesture features and Find My support, and it feels as close to writing on paper as you can get, like it's instant with no lag. However, I do find the new gestures to kind of be very easy to accidentally trigger, so I turn them off completely, I'm not going to be using those. The trackpad integrates beautifully with iPadOS, making it feel like you're using your finger on the trackpad to touch the screen, which in reality you're not. And the Apple Pencil also feels like a natural extension of the iPad, especially in apps like Procreate and Final Cut Pro, it feels much more intuitive than using your finger 
or even the trackpad. But these accessories are almost just essential for the iPad Pro and take it to the next level. And iPadOS has become much better and much more customizable than ever. You can add widgets to the lock screen and home screen, customize app layouts, and the Files app has become much more useful. There's also Stage Manager, which I know some people like, but personally, I never use it because it's really not the true floating window support that we always wanted. Sure, you can have some floating windows on your screen, but they kind of just snap to one corner of the screen or another, so it's not really like a true floating window experience, and I just never use this feature. But on the software side, apps like Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro also now exist, of course. And I haven't used Logic Pro because I don't do any music production, but a quick browse on Reddit, people absolutely love this app and it feels really good to use on the iPad because it just feels more natural with the Apple Pencil. Now, these apps aren't the same as their desktop counterparts, they're not just the Mac version ported over to the iPad. They have their own little quirks and features, things that make them a little bit different and more optimized for the Apple Pencil, for touch, and for the Magic Keyboard. But they're far better than most other third-party alternatives for video and audio editing, at least in my opinion. Plus, if you use the Mac version of these apps, they actually integrate very well with the iPad version. I've edited a few videos on the iPad with Final Cut so far, and I've been a lifelong Final Cut Pro user on the Mac, and a lot of the things work pretty well on the iPad, like it's very intuitive, there are definitely some things missing, and there's some things that are almost deal breakers for editing a video in my opinion, but you can do most things here no problem. Apple also does continue to update Final Cut Pro on the iPad, which is great to see. There's also an update that just came out very recently with a few cool new things. But yeah, it's definitely getting there. It's no Final Cut Pro for Mac, but it's pretty damn good. And also, of course, third-party apps like Photoshop on the iPad has significantly improved over the past few years, and a non-Adobe alternative, Affinity Photo, is also a great option as well. But things like Photoshop's Generative Fill and easy-to-use Clone Stamp tool make it a great on-the-go option to edit photos instead of having to bring my Mac around for very simple edits. And Shaper 3D, a 3D design app that I learned almost entirely on the iPad, which is available cross-platform, really reinvigorated my love for the iPad Pro. Now I had zero knowledge of 3D design prior to using this application and I learned it very quickly and now it's become another tool part of my portfolio. And as I mentioned, it is available across many devices, including Vision Pro. It's the best experience on the iPad from my experience. Being able to pinch and zoom using the Apple Pencil for very precise selection, it's honestly unbeatable. It is really incredible to be able to draw something up on the iPad, then send it off to my 3D printer and have it printed out within like a few hours and have a physical design in my hands. And another app I've been using for a while is Notion, who is also the sponsor of this video. I use Notion in so many different areas of my life because it really is a great all-in-one organization app. It allows me to plan videos easily, organize my thoughts, plan trips, and do more simple things like chore and grocery lists. And the clean user interface allows me to stay focused on my tasks while having really easy access to other things like my calendar. And with this feature, I'm able to quickly access my schedule and see upcoming events while still working on a note. Notion is great for simple things like jotting down daily notes in the moment. Whenever I have a creative idea or need to remember something, I put it right in Notion. But I also use it for organizing thoughts that might help me in future videos. In Notion, I can easily create a board where I'm able to categorize thoughts about topics I find interesting, and this is great for someone like me where I'm always thinking about so many things at once and always have ideas flowing. Putting them down in a clean, organized board like this one gives me the peace of mind to forget about them and know that when I have another great idea, I can come back to this board later and combine my ideas to develop my concepts further to create a final project. I also use Notion to help me structure the flow of my videos, from simple things like shot lists, to-do lists for projects, and point form notes for scripts and A-roll, to doing things like adding sketches for my thumbnail ideas before I choose a final shot, or integrating other pictures that help me inspire various shots within my videos. This is my favorite way to work on a video from start to finish and stay organized. I also recently went on a trip to Japan with my girlfriend and we used Notion to organize everything for our trip. We collaborated on a note together to put places we both wanted to go with links, pictures, distances from our hotel, as well as info on the neighborhoods each location was in. This was great as we both had many places that we wanted to go and putting it all in Notion into one organized place was a great way to stay on track. We also used Notion to create a simple packing list. This way we could easily see what we each needed, what one person already brought or packed, and to make sure we didn't forget 
anything important. I have Notion on my iPad, which is where I mainly use it, but I can also access it on my phone and on my computer, which is great because then I can access my boards anywhere and it all syncs up. Notion has been amazing to help me organize my life, both my personal life and my work life. And if you want to integrate Notion into your life, I'll have a link in the description down below so you can set it all up for yourself. And that's it. Back to the iPad. Of course, another big app for me on the iPad is Procreate, the app that originally made me fall in love with the iPad in the first place. It handles big projects and many layers without a problem. Whether I'm drawing storyboards, making wallpapers, or just drawing for fun, Procreate is an incredible tool. And almost all the wallpapers that I've designed that are available on my website were pretty much all designed on various versions of the iPad Pro. And Shopify, which my store is based on, the app is great here on the iPad too, so I can do all the back-end business stuff, adjust my website, various design elements, it all works very well on the iPad. And all of these apps, which wouldn't have even been possible or functional a few years ago on the iPad, work very well here and they're all really smooth. And the fact that it's so thin and portable where I can bring it with me basically anywhere, traveling to the coffee shop around my home and studio, it's wonderful. Battery life is also a strong point here too. Most days the iPad lasts me a full day of usage, if not more than a day if I'm using it just casually here and there, but for more intensive things like using Final Cut Pro, Procreate on full brightness, or Shaper 3D, the battery does drain a lot faster. But it charges up quickly with a fast charger or using an external battery, it gets me going again real quick. And the ability to plug into an external display for various things here and there also adds more versatility to the iPad experience. Now, of course, this isn't a full in-depth review on the iPad Pro. There are so many of those out there by now. But what I will say, though, is that if you're looking to actually buy an iPad Pro like this one, I can say confidently it's a capable device for professional work. Whether it's video editing, photo editing, graphic design, or 3D modeling even, it all can be done on the iPad in some capacity. Now sure, some tasks are better suited to a desktop OS and a lot of applications are not even available on the iPad which you might need for your professional work. But for most people, for many uses, the iPad Pro can be that device you use for creative work and even as your main device. But this being all said, I'm not trying to replace my MacBook Pro with the iPad Pro. I think it's almost just too extreme, kind of silly to even expect that. I think what's actually more exciting is how they complement each other really well. With things like Sidecar, for example, various iCloud features, a lot of cross compatibility with files, being able to airdrop, I think that's pretty exciting. So you could use your Mac as a desktop at home and the iPad on the go for various files. You can keep working. And I think that's really cool, especially compared to expecting your iPad to replace your Mac desktop or your MacBook, it's a great companion device. But one thing I've also been thinking about is how much I love the new iPad mini as well. It takes all of the best elements of the iPad Pro but makes it a lot more portable and easy to bring around, like pocket sized or small bag sized. And it still runs the Pro apps like Final Cut Pro and Shaper 3D and Photoshop, but it's something I prefer to take around with me because it's just so thin, light, and small. So that's something I've been thinking about too lately. But whether you choose the cheapest base model iPad or the full, fully specced flagship iPad Pro, you're getting a great experience across all these devices. The iPad is a great creative companion, whether it's an addition to a Mac-based setup or it's your main creative device, you can do a lot these days on an iPad. But all this to say, this whole video, the main point here is the iPad still has a place in the world. The tech world, the creative world, whatever, I still use it every single day, and I really do enjoy the iPad experience. And who knows what the future of the iPad is going to be like. I mean, the hardware is basically perfect at this point. The software does need some more refining. More pro apps on the iPad would be amazing. But overall, like, it's a really solid device, and I feel like it lives up to the overall concept of what the iPad should be. So I don't know. I've been talking forever. I want to hear your thoughts on the iPad in the comments down below. What should they do with the hardware? What should they do with the software? What improvements would you like to see in the next iPad Pro? Let me know in the comments. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe. And thank you for watching.